The offensive in Mosul is taking place as American forces are picking up the tempo against ISIS in all theaters. We sat down with Defense Secretary James Mattis at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point Saturday and asked him about the new strategy. Our strategy right now is to accelerate the campaign against ISIS. It is a threat to all civilized nations. And the bottom line is we are going to move in an accelerated and reinforced manner, throw them on their back foot. We have already shifted from attrition tactics where we shove them from one position to another in Iraq and Syria to annihilation tactics where we surround them. Our intention is that the foreign fighters do not survive the fight to return home uh, to North Africa, to Europe, to America, to, to Asia, to Africa. Uh, we're not going to allow them to do so. We're going to uh, stop them there and take apart the caliphate. Explain what it means to be moving in an annihilation posture as opposed to attrition. Well, attrition is where you keep pushing them out of the areas that they're in, John. And what we intend to do by surrounding them is to not allow them to fall back, thus reinforcing themselves as they get smaller and smaller, making the fight tougher and tougher. You can see that right now, for example, in western Mosul that is surrounded and the Iraqi security forces are moving against them. Talafar is now surrounded. We have got efforts underway right now to surround their self-declared caliphate capital of Raqqa. Uh, that uh, surrounding operation is going on. And once surrounded, then we'll go in and clean them out. One of the things you've mentioned in this new accelerated tempo is that the president has delegated authority to the right level. What does that mean? When you're in operations, the best thing you can do at the top level is get the strategy right. You have to get the big ideas right. You have to determine what is the policy, what is the level of effort you're willing to commit to it. And then you delegate to those who have to execute that strategy to the appropriate level. What's the appropriate level? It's the level where people are trained and equipped to take decisions so we move swiftly against the enemy. There is no corporation in the world that would, in a competitive environment, try and concentrate all decisions at the corporate level. But I would point out here that we have not changed the rules of engagement. There is no relaxation of our attention to protect the innocent. We do everything we can to protect the civilians, and actually lowering, delegating the authority to the lower level allows us to do this better. After the annihilation has been done, does that mean you can't let it fall back into ISIS hands? Once ISIS is defeated, uh, there's a larger effort underway to make certain that we don't just sprout a new enemy. We know ISIS is going to go down. We've had success on the battlefield. We've freed millions of people from being under their control. And not one inch of that ground that ISIS has lost has ISIS regained. It shows the effectiveness of what we're doing. However, there are larger currents, there are larger confrontations in this part of the world, and we cannot be blind to those. That is why they met in Washington under Secretary Tillerson's effort to carry out President Trump's strategy to make certain we don't just clean out this enemy and end up with a new enemy in the same area. You served under President Obama. You're now serving President Trump. How are they different? Everyone leads in their own way, John. In the case of the president, he has got to select the right people that he has trust in to carry out his vision of, of a strategy. With Secretary Tillerson and I, we coordinate all of the, the president's uh, campaign. We just make certain that foreign policy is led by the State Department. I inform Secretary Tillerson of the military factors, and we make certain that then when we come out of our meetings, State Department and Defense Department are tied tightly together, and we can give straightforward advice to the Commander-in-Chief. President Trump has said to defeat ISIS, he has said they, there has to be a humiliation of ISIS. What does that mean? I think as we look at this problem of ISIS, it's more than just an army. It's also a fight about ideas. And we have got to dry up their recruiting. We have got to dry up their fundraising. The way we intend to do it is to humiliate them, to divorce them from any nation giving them protection, and humiliating their message of hatred, of violence. Uh, anyone who kills women and children is not devout. They, have, they cannot dress themselves up in false religious garb 
and say that somehow this message has dignity. We're going to strip them of any kind of, of legitimacy, and that is why you see the international community acting in concert. When should Americans look to see victory? This is going to be a long fight. The problems that we confront uh, are going to lead to an era of frequent skirmishing. We will do it by, with, and through other nations. Uh, we will do it through developing their capabilities to do a lot of the fighting. We'll help them with intelligence. Certainly, we can help train them for what they face. Uh, and you see our forces engaged in that, from Africa to Asia. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this is going to be a long fight, and I don't put timelines on fights. What about civilian casualties as a result of this faster tempo? Uh, civilian casualties are a fact of life in this sort of uh, situation. We do everything humanly possible, consistent with military necessity, taking many chances to avoid civilian casualties at all costs. Under this new aggressive posture, what can be done that would not have been done, say, six months ago? Uh, probably the most important thing we are doing now is we are accelerating this fight. We are accelerating the tempo of it. We are going to squash the enemy's ability to give some indication that they have invulnerability, that they can exist, that they can send people off to Istanbul, to Belgium, to Great Britain and kill people with impunity. We're going to shatter their sense of invincibility. They're in the physical caliphate. That's only one phase of this. Then we have the virtual caliphate that they use the internet. Obviously, we're going to have to watch for other organizations uh, growing up. We cannot go into some kind of complacency. I'm from the American West. We have forest fires out there. And some of the worst forest fires in our history, the most damage were caused when we pulled the fire crews off the line too early. And so we're going to have to continue to keep the pressure on the enemy. There's no room for complacency on this. A hundred civilians were killed after a U.S. bomb hit a building in Mosul in Iraq. Is this uh, the result of this faster tempo? Is this the kind of thing Americans need to get used to as a natural byproduct of this strategy? The American people and the American military will never get used to civilian casualties. We will, we will fight against that every way we can possibly bring our intelligence and our tactics to bear. People who had tried to leave that city were not allowed to by ISIS. We are the good guys. We're not the perfect guys, but we are the good guys. And so we're doing what we can. We believe we found residue that was not consistent with our bomb. So we believe that what happened there was that ISIS had stored munitions in a residential location, uh, showing once again the callous disregard that has characterized every operation they have run.